In this video, we are going to go over some of the top problems that we've come to find on this Nissan Altima. This is one of them. My name's Len from 1A Auto. Let's get into it. For our first couple problems, let's start off under the hood. The first one, we're going to talk about a long crank or even a stalling condition. The stalling condition typically happens when the vehicle is at the normal operating temperature. The common reasons for these would be one of two sensors, three even if you think about it. Up along the top of your engine, you have two camshaft position sensors. This is a dual overhead cam vehicle, so there has to be two of them. Aside from that, you have a crank position sensor. That's located down along the back side of the engine. This is typically easiest to access from underneath the vehicle. Now, since any of these sensors would typically throw a check engine light or a code, you might say, inside the computer system, it's going to be fairly easy to diagnose if you had a small scanner of some sort. Once you know exactly what you need, you can go ahead and order it from 1AAuto.com. We'll ship it out to you fast and free. Replacing any of these sensors is fairly simple overall. Once you can gain access to it, just go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector, give it a quick check for corrosion, set the wiring aside, remove the one bolt that holds it in place, and then slide the sensor out of the area. Give it a quick check compared to the brand new one and slide the new one into place, torque it to the manufacturer's specifications, put everything back together, and take your vehicle for a road test. For our next problem, we'll continue on with runnability issues. This one comes down to a throttle body problem. You might find that you have an issue with the idling in your vehicle. You're sitting still with the vehicle running and you can see on your tachometer that it looks as though the needle's bouncing around a little bit. It's not supposed to do that. It should sit pretty much level. Otherwise, you might be driving down the road, you've got your foot on the accelerator pedal and you're not changing the pressure any, but you can feel as though the acceleration is either picking up a little bit or you might even be decelerating a little bit. Common reasons for this could be the fact that your throttle body itself is dirty in some way. If you were to find your air filter housing in your engine compartment and follow the air inlet tube, it's going to lead you all the way down to your throttle body. Looking at this from the outside where that air inlet tube is, it might not look so dirty, but if you were to remove it from the intake and have a look along the backside, that's typically where you're going to see a whole bunch of black soot or carbon. That's sitting in there and it's accumulating and it's going to cause a restriction of your butterfly valve, which is located inside of here. Now that valve itself is what controls the amount of air that's getting drawn into the engine. Now, if you were to reach inside there because you wanted to clean it and you were to push on it like I am here, you're going to cause calibration issues inside of this area. Behind this cover right here, there's a whole bunch of gears. You wanna be careful for that. Cleaning the throttle body is a fix. It may not work every time, especially if you happen to touch on that butterfly valve and cause an issue. Better than that, you can order a brand new throttle body from 1AAuto.com. The installation's fairly easy overall. The next problem we'll talk about with these engines is an overheating condition. This typically comes down to a thermostat issue. The thermostat itself is responsible for regulating the temperature of your engine. Once the coolant reaches a certain temperature, it's going to cause a change in this spring right here. That'll retract the valve and allow coolant to flow through the cooling system through the radiator to get cooled down and make its way back to the engine to cool down the engine itself. If the thermostat was stuck in the closed position, that means that the coolant will not be able to flow as it should and you're going to have an overheating condition. You might not happen to notice the overheating condition, but you might notice that you have minimal heat coming out of the vents. Once again, that's due to the fact that there's a restriction in the flow of the coolant making its way through the system. If the coolant can't make its way to the heater core, which is located behind your dash, there's no way it can heat up the passenger compartment temperature. The location of your thermostat will be located down along the front of your engine. You're going to locate your coolant hoses leading to the thermostat housing. Go ahead and drain the coolant on this, remove the thermostat housing, and remove the thermostat from the area. You can give it a close inspection, compare it to a brand new one, and install the brand new one that you ordered from 1AAuto.com. After that, fill up the cooling system with the manufacturer's specified fluid, make sure you burp out any air in the system, and then take your vehicle for a road test. Our next problem comes down to a starting and stalling condition again. But you're probably wondering, why am I in the backseat of the vehicle? This one comes down to the fuel pump assembly. This is actually located underneath your rear seat. If you were to lift this up, you're going to find a small trap door. The replacement for your fuel pump assembly is fairly simple overall because it's pretty much out in the open. Of course, you would want to make sure that you evacuate the pressure from inside of the system before you continue. 
Go ahead and find that electrical connector, disconnect it, disconnect your fuel lines, remove the locking ring, and slide the fuel pump assembly up and out of position. Go ahead and give it a quick inspection in comparison to the brand new one, slide the new one in, and put everything back together. Let's bounce into talking about the next issue. This one comes down to a clunking noise over bumps while you're driving down the road. These vehicles have an issue with the front strut assemblies. Of course, if you did have a clunking noise, you want to make sure you diagnose it properly before you order anything. There's a whole bunch of suspension and steering items that could potentially make this noise, but the front struts are more than likely the culprit. If you have to replace them, it's always a good idea to make sure you replace them as a pair. And once you've done so, take your vehicle down to your local alignment shop. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might help somebody, go ahead and share it with them. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there are you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.